Today we're going to be talking about intermediate trades. Simply put, intermediate trades are a means to an end of completing a trade that you otherwise would not be able to do as well. So today, uh, the first thing we're going to do to look at these intermediate trades is try to make a trade where the demand is not exactly what we want to pay. So we're interested in the Phillies Alec Bohm. We don't really have a long-term solution at first base, and this guy can really rake. He can field really well at first base. He's tall. He's a perfect fit for our team. So let's see what they want. And this is a lot more than we want to pay. Now, maybe we're willing to trade a top player, but it's got to be somebody like, say, Will Smith. And this isn't going to cut it. So we like a lot of the players on our team. What we need to do is find a player who can essentially fill in on this trade that we can pick up cheaply and will help make this work significantly better. So we're going to go to the Padres. And one of the most commonly known intermediate pieces or just higher value trade targets is Tommy Pham. So the Padres, who are a little bit tight in budget space, do not really like Pham, who is making about $9 million. But Pham is a pretty good on base guy. He's very good defense in left field, uh, can play all three outfield spots decently well, really good base running. He hits really well overall, aside from getting on base a lot. And the Padres want absolutely nothing for him. So we're just going to throw in a random player, get his contract retained as much as they're willing to. So 15% complete the deal. And now we're going to throw in Fam to this Phillies deal with Bohm and see how that might potentially affect their asking price overall. So here we have Fam on the DFA list. And now we can see how this affects the trade. So it appears that they are willing to uh, accept more players, but they can afford less in this case. Uh, I believe Dustin May wasn't on the list before. Let me just check and make sure that's the case. Yeah, so with Tommy Pham, they are now willing to accept Dustin May. So uh, they basically have had their trade stance improved, and we literally picked him up for nothing. He is making this trade a little bit easier on us. So in this case, let's just say hypothetically, May is a player that we are willing to trade, and the guys ahead of him aren't. So now we have used Tommy Pham. As a player, we picked up for nothing, an intermediate chip to cut down on the price of the deal. Now, it doesn't have to be a player you pick up for nothing. It could be a player that the other team values highly. So let's say you're trading for somebody like Evan White. The Mariners don't really like Evan White, but maybe another team does. So you pick him up and then you can immediately trade him to another team. And yeah, he's going to cost you a little something on the Mariners side. But if it's going to reduce, say, Dustin May to Evan White in this deal, then that's something you're absolutely going to want to go for. Overall, intermediate trades are a great way of lessening the burden on uh, your trade price, allowing you to maintain, retain your stars while you're picking up some of the higher end players yourself. So this is why I like recommending that people are constantly trading, constantly making moves, because there will always be players undervalued or uh, discrepancies in how teams value players that you can exploit by picking up guys that you notice are significantly undervalued by a team. And then even if you don't want to keep them around, immediately flipping them to another team like we're doing here. We don't really have a spot for Tommy Pham on our team. So what are we doing? We're trading him right to the Phillies to lessen the price of picking up Alec Bohm, a player we do see as a long-term solution on our franchise. So uh, overall, there are a couple other things you can do with intermediate trades or similar types of things. You're going to be targeting the players that are undervalued by teams, their teams. So we saw Tommy Pham, a guy who can get on base a lot, a guy who's a pretty good hitter, and the Padres who just simply do not want his contract. And they're not just willing to give him to us for a literal garbage in AAA or whatever. They're willing to give him to us and retain 15% of his contract. That is a clear undervaluation of players. And particularly in live starts, you can mess around with this a little bit to get a better idea of who these undervalued types are going to be. So uh, you can just fiddle around with some trades and then shop players around and see what they're worth on the free agent or the uh, trade market to teams that are not their own. And you could pick up some more anomalies like FAM. And I mentioned another one earlier in Evan White, but there is literally about an infinite number of possibilities out there for you uh, to explore. And this is going to be the case in a lot of trades too. You can obviously not do this with indiv every single individual player in a fictional league or whatever, but you can get an idea of what types of players teams value. What do teams look for 
uh, in certain players and do basically the same thing to determine when a team is undervaluing a player or when you can trade for them and immediately swap them to another team. And another thing is players sometimes have really good ratings, but nobody in the league wants him. Like in the first update, Ryan Weathers was a great example of this. He was a mid-rotation starter with the Padres, but uh, he hadn't really proven himself, so he wasn't too difficult to trade for. And in this case, you pick him up, you use him in your rotation for a year, he gains a lot of value, and you can flip him immediately. There are plenty of players out there like that, and uh, overall recognizing those guys and using them uh, as intermediate chips, but well, they'll be on your team to add value. So essentially, they're playing for your team, they're giving value to your team, and then later on, you trade them at a higher price than they were worth before. And especially for rebuilding teams or when you're first starting off your franchise and trying to get to a point where you're happy with all your players, I strongly recommend doing this strategy, especially for any spot in your team that you do not believe is perfectly set. You want to constantly be moving these players through that are temporary type guys, uh, just players that are gaining value, adding to their trade value on your team before you give them to another team. Uh, this strategy really, really helps build elite teams. I cannot overstate how effective this is for me. Uh, just being able to essentially keep all the players you like, cycle through good quality talent, and get it to other teams at a significantly cheaper price. So again, this is essentially trading out, say, a Gavin Lux for Alec Bohm trade to a whatever that random prospect and say Evan White for Alec Bohm trade. You can really cut down on prices and very effective strategy. I hope this guy I hope this was helpful for you guys. Be sure to leave comments if you have any questions. I would be more than happy to help. And I'll see you guys in the next video.